Hello world of YouTube and welcome to the end of the second session of Expectations Reality Show where I take a look at games from my backlog that I haven't played, set them up in one video, and review them in one a couple months down the line. And this is that video. And my thoughts on session two are that it didn't come together quite how I wanted it to. Um, it was a bit of a mess. I had to push it back, which is something I never want to do. And honestly, it did give me some things to think about when continuing this show. Because I still want to do it more. I like the idea of this show, and I think it has wings. I just need to fine-tune it a little bit if I want to keep it as consistent as my other shows that I do on the channel. Um, with that in mind, let's break down the three games I decided to tackle for this session. Well, really two, because one, it's it's a long story. We'll get to it when I get to it. But let's 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 at least talk about the games, some of the games that I promised I would play, or that I said I would play for this session. I'd assume this is how some Star Wars fans felt when The Phantom Menace came out, because Kingdom Hearts 3 is a massive disappointment from its really undercooked combat system that boils down to a myriad of mini games to the other 50,000 mini games that this game includes to the bastardization and streamlined approach that they took with 100 Acre Wood which I'd argue is the biggest fault that this game has but I'll get into my other faults with it down to the really really stupid story I didn't like this game and I've kind of talked about that throughout some videos of the last couple of months. And my friends have kind of heard me just rant about how much of a disappointment this game is. But it is a massive disappointment. Now I know I probably should have played a lot of the side games before I played 3. But I caught up on the story beforehand, like I said, in my expectations. And I knew that they would incorporate a lot of the side characters, or a lot of the characters from the side games into 3. But man... Is it just a convoluted mess? This game feels like it lacks direction in a big way. I mean, it switched protagonists a lot, and especially in the third act, and it was just, it was not a fun story to follow. And as someone who likes Kingdom Hearts, I think it was frustrating to see them just blatantly not care about basic fundamentals that were set up in the first two games. Like, nobody's. Roxas, Sora's nobody, and this is the biggest problem I had with the story. Roxas, Sora's nobody, doesn't have a heart because a nobody is a vessel without and a Roxas? heart. Yet a crucial yes. part of the plot of this game is bringing Roxas back by giving Roxas's him a heart. Full data in the construction, meaning Somewhere really dumb. The machine, there's really a stupid. That data that I think the anti-Aqua shit is so fucking dumb. Made even more useless by the fact that by the time it's introduced, it's resolved just as quickly by the end of a boss fight. And the entire, like, third act of this game is just a mess. Not even mention the fact that the final world that isn't really the final world that's just another fucking stupid mini game that takes too long to complete is the first of like eight endings of this game. This game feels like the return of the king of Kingdom Hearts games. And don't even get me fucking started on the prologue that is technically the tutorial the first time you're in Olympus that kind of takes the piss out of itself by calling it Kingdom Hearts 2.7 or some shit. It's just this game, again, lack of direction it feels like they were jumping from idea to idea to idea and they kept everything in the pot and it feels like a cobbled together mess not to mention a lot of the worlds are very disjointed it's upsetting that the worlds that i was very excited to play toy story monsters inc uh san Francisco, were all the shortest worlds of the game like san Francisco is the most disappointing because you spend the entire game Sitting in Hero's Garage, then going to do a mission. Sitting in Hero's Garage, going to do a mission. Yet, in Pirates of the fucking Caribbean, they added an entire sailing system to the game. There's an entire secondary system within that game that could have easily been implemented or flushed out other, used to flush out other parts of the game. 
This game is just very inconsistent in its presentation. I hated so much of my experience with this game. And the ending is fucking dumb. It is so dumb. Why? Why is Sora there? What's the purpose of that? What 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 could that possibly bring to the Kingdom Hearts world other than making it even more confusing and stupid? I didn't like this game. The reason why it's not getting a lower score than this is because some of the combat's fun. Some of the keyblades you get to use and upgrade amongst fighting are fun. I liked the uh, the star shooter that was also the honey shooter. I liked the yo-yos from the um, from the Monsters Inc. world. I liked the the level up for the Toy Story Keyblade. You know, those were cool. Even the even the Pirates of the Caribbean Keyblade had a cool upgrade to it. But a lot of a lot of this game was just very underwhelming. It was very very underwhelming. It was such a lackluster experience to me personally. And so I'm giving it a three out of ten. It is a massive disappointment to me. One of the biggest disappointments I've had in a game in a long time. And that's saying something, because there have been some stinkers out there, let me tell you. You know, I, in my review, or my expectations, I told, said that I had tempered uh, expectations for Prey. <clears throat> and I feel like it both exceeded and de-exceeded my expectations. I really don't know what to make of my experience with this game. Um, I know that it's frustrating, and I know that it's annoying. And I know that by the end of the game, I wanted it to be over, but there were moments where I had some fun in this game. You know, I liked some of the weapons. I liked some of the weapon designs. I just feel like this game was trying to be like three or four different shooters in one package. And the pieces they tried to make together didn't come together all that well. I like the Doom-esque look of the game. I like that a lot of the enemies resemble kind of weird alterations of like a Doom or a Duke Nukem. I like the 3D Realms touch when it comes to the beginning of the game. I like that there was like a, a, a focus on immersion through like arcade cabinets and stuff that reminded me a lot of Duke Nukem in a, in a good way. But I think that that UI touch is annoying when you're having to interact with computer screens a lot and it causes you to have to scroll a mouse on a screen to get it to stay or to get it to, to function and it's the same issue I have with Doom 3 if I ever go back and play Doom 3 there's a similar problem I have with it that um, this game has. I also don't really like the the, the the fact that death has no weight in this game. That was the mechanic that I talked about in my expectations that was going to potentially be um, a misstep for me and it is. I think that the fact that whenever you die, you don't really die, you just go to the shooting minigame, it gets tedious. And by the end of the game, when you are lost and don't really know where to go and you end up dying a lot, it causes a lot of frustrations within the gamer. Um, I think that the story is very lackluster. The story, I feel like, is trying to be like a Half-Life or a, or a Bioshock before Bioshock, but it doesn't build to anything good. I think it's a little cliche in its delivery to be spiritual in its presentation. Um, it falls flat in a, in a handful of instances, and I don't know, it's just not as good as I was hoping it would be. Um, so, like I said, some of the weapons are cool. I like that one of the guns you get is literally just the arm of a boss that you cut off with a force field. I love the acid shotgun. That thing is overpowered as shit. And I like the leech gun. That that gun is, is great. It's a cool... Uh, twist on like a shooting gun and I like the anti-gravity stuff I like the 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 walking on walls shit that was that was fun if not a little frustrating in some instances the flight mechanics in the in the vehicle that you get are terrible and I think that like I said a lot of the levels near the end of the game are are very are too open and leave the player feeling lost at least I did a lot of the time and it mounted to a lot of frustration but yeah, this game is this game is very mediocre because it's it's positive and negatives cancel each other out pretty 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 evenly. Um, I personally give this thing like a five out of ten. It's it's not the worst thing I played, but it, it is one of the most average games that I played in a while, and that's a little upsetting because the the trailer at least made it look really flashy and you know it had a lot of intrigue in it. You know they got Art Bell, and boy do they use Art Bell to the most that they can. They got their money's worth out of that guy. Let me tell you. 
You know, when I when I set forth these three games, I thought that it was going to be an easy task. I was like, oh, I can I can play Kingdom Hearts three, Paper Mario two, and Prey, no problem. But the problem I faced was that I put two RPGs next to each other, two big scale games next to each other, and it, I felt like it was like sitting at a buffet. You know, when you first start a buffet, you're like, yeah, I can get a bit, I can get two plates, no problem. So you get two plates, you get a plate, you eat it, and you scarf it down, and you enjoy, or you, you at least eat the plate and you feel filled, you feel full. When you grab your second plate and you start to eat it, you're like, man, I don't think I can finish this plate. And that's kind of where I reached with this session of Expectations of Reality. I'll be honest, I still have not really started Paper Mario, but I don't want to leave you guys without a third game. And because I do like to set aside time for myself, I do play games in my free time when I'm not working on videos or anything like that. I have been playing a couple games, and I figured I would talk about one of those for the third slot this month and move Paper Mario to the next session. And... I'm going to be making, I'm going to be setting some ground rules for myself for future sessions of Expectations Reality so that this doesn't happen again, but one of those will be one RPG at a time because it is really hard to get a good amount of time in two RPGs amongst everything else I have going on. So I do apologize for this, but the game that I'm talking about isn't a bad one, and it's one that I'd recommend as a solid fighting game, and that's For Honor. I know that this game has kind of a weird reputation and got kind of a bad rap when it first came out, but I think this game is really solid. I think that the improvements that they made seemingly make that has made the game better, and that's what I've been reading as I look into this game more and more, is that this game is better now than it was on launch, which is interesting to me, and that's like topic for a whole nother day but for honor is a game that i got for free um a while ago on playstation and it's one that i've worked into my rotation of games that i play with friends you know me and shake play this game a decent amount together online and i like the fighting in this game i like the mechanics i like that characters do feel very different and their special abilities are easily utilized and integrated into the combat itself i like the various game modes and i like that you can play this alone or in a bigger scale with friends to make it a more rich experience fighting game experience i think that it's a unique fighting game i like that the focus is on strategy and, and learning how to tackle an opponent's fighting style you know, and I, I mean my thick boy, I mean the big thick beast, and I'm cool with that. But I do like to spice it up every now and again and switch up the characters that I play. And like I said, I like the various game modes. I think that they do a good job at keeping this intimate feeling combat intimate across various game modes, whether they be duels, whether they be the, the King of the Hill type game mode, or the ambush game mode, which matches in that last up to like 30, 40 minutes, but they kept are kept engaging with the AI little bots and the variety of heroes that people tend to pick when you're charging or defending your castle. You know, uh, charging A or defending your castle. I I think that the single player is okay. Uh, I haven't finished it, but I've, I've played a, a, little, a little bit of it here and there, and it's all right, it's solid. You know, a lot of it is, is teaching you how to master the fighting mechanics of the game, but it's done in a way that has a story that is compelling enough to make you want to keep playing more you know i like the the use of integrating combat with different enemy types against your enemy type i like that they're sprawling across the three different classes in the game and i think that it's a, again a solid fighting experience i think that the meta game could use a little tweaking to give players more in excitement but it's nothing that i would say detracts from the game a tremendous amount you know, because there's this whole meta narrative of picking a nation and conquering the nation. Kind of like what Jump Force, a game that dropped this year, it was was seemingly trying to do. And I do feel like it's better integrated in here than it was in there. But I still feel like they could do a little more or add other mini game modes to help you contribute to that aspect of the, of the meta. But that aside, this is still a really fun game and it's a solid experience and it's a good warm-up game. I give this one like a 6 out of 10. It's nothing that I would say is 
mind-blowing or anything and it can get a little buggy at times but it's it's not terrible it's really not terrible and it's it's fun to play with friends or by yourself as well those are the games that I played or have been playing over the last couple of months uh, tomorrow I'll be dropping the expectations for the third session because as you know with this segment once one ends another one's coming right around the corner so hopefully you guys are excited for that I do have the games picked and I think that it's a better rounded batch of games than this one was and I think I'll have no problem completing them over the next couple of months. Thank you guys so much for watching, for your support on here and on Patreon. I'm going to get out of here. I have been Viral Rack. You guys have been Ace Lives and Situations, and I'll see you another day.